Today we are making a Belgian blonde, but we do do overnight matches. So while the recipe is gonna be floating around me somewhere, let me show you what we got going on and then we'll walk you through the rest of the brew day. So here we've got a yeast starter going. It's a two and a half gallon yeast starter. And we pitched three packets of uh, gnome and three packets of triple double. So we're getting a nice healthy yeast pitch going for our brew. And we've told you guys before, but we like to do an overnight mash. And so we've got our mash sitting in here and recirculating, as you can see. And what we do with that is we'll set uh, our temperature on something like this Bruzilla um, to what we want our mash out temperature to be or pretty close to what we want the high end temperature to be. So we'll mash in really low at let's say like 140 to 145 and then overnight it rises up to that target temperature or pretty close to. Usually it falls about five degrees shy. Let's check out where we're at with it. So it looks like we made it right up to 160, about five degrees shy of where we have our water set. And if you can see in there, all we've got is a coil inside the hot water and our liquid is running out of the mash tun into the top of that and then right back into the top and doing a big recirculation. All right, all that said, we're now ready to start sparging. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going. So next what we're gonna do is we're just gonna raise that uh, up to a little higher temperature to get a true mash up, probably closer to 170, save a little gas uh, in our big kettle. And then we're going to start adding some more water into the top of that that we're going to be using as our sparge water. So all together we need about double that amount of water to be hot for sparging. So back in focus, that's what we got going on next. So I recruited our little mash and boil for some extra hot water. Right now I've got about 22 gallons of hot water um, currently, but we're gonna need about 35 total. So I need to make another 12 gallons. Luckily sparging is going to take at least an hour. So we'll have plenty of time to make more hot water as we go. So let's go ahead and get that hooked up. One of the fun things about using the Bruzilla for my sparge water heater is since it's got the built-in pump, that's one less pump that I've got to move around when I'm getting everything ready to do a sparge on what's basically a three vessel system. So what I can do is on this side, I'll go ahead and turn this pump off and I can take this part of the sparge arm, attach it to up here and that's ready to go. And then now, Let's take this end off of the pump that we were using to recirculate. Pinch the tip, because you know. Now we just got our kettle over here that we'll go into. It's spraying me. All right, now we're all set there. You can see even before I put the pump on, it's starting to just gravity feed in there. Sparge water. So now I'm just gonna control so that the sparge water going on top of that is about the same range as the work going into there. And then as we're draining out of the Brusillo, I'll just keep filling it with uh, my other things that are making hot water so that we can get the 35 gallons that we need while keeping an eye on all our levels. Once we get all that done, then we'll be going to a boil. We're gonna actually have to use the, uh, we're gonna actually have to use the Brusilla for part of our boil because we're doing two barrels, which is 61, 62 gallons, but we only got a 50 gallon kettle. So the very, very tippy top is 50. So we're gonna put about 48 in here and about 15 in there. And that'll have our full volume. Ta-da. So we got all our, got all our sparge water measured out. Currently that's sparging into here as we go. Uh, we're about 20 gallons into the sparge right now. So while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and start heating up the kettle with our propane burner. Cause you know, saving time and all. In the kettle, it's looking very, very deep amber right now. But after we get all the rest of the sparge water in there, and it uncondenses a little bit when you hold it up to a glass, that'll look pretty light golden brown. Or pretty light golden, not brown at all. Golden blonde. That is the word I'm looking for. We are almost done sparging. You can see on my big kettle, I've got that almost full. And then on my Brazilla, I've got that about five gallons away. So I'm gonna finish the rest of the water into there. Then we'll get both these going at a boil at the same time. And I'll show you my chilling mechanism, which is going to be when this is done, I'm going to run this big kettle through the chiller. And at the same time, I'm gonna be running that Brazilla into the big kettle. And then it's all gonna go online into our big fermenter here. Then we're gonna pitch our yeast uh, and then we'll have, have beer. So, uh, 
here's here's some shots of that, I guess. Got a nice rolling boil going behind me, so now we're just gonna add our 60 minute edition of Hulmelon hops. Right in there. Um, overall, the hopping on this style isn't terribly important. It's more malt and yeast driven, but we still like to go kind of classic German ish. Uh, when you add hops, you can always make sure you don't get a ton of gas breakout, uh, especially on a vertical pot like this, it's this size, because a lot of dissolved gases can be stored in the, the liquid. And so sometimes when you add something that's got a little bit of air on it, like hops, into there, it breaks out a little bit of gas, and that little bit of gas breaks out a lot of gas, and that's how you get boilovers. But that was only two ounces in this giant thing, so if I was adding more, I probably would have done more to contain it. Thirty-minute edition, uh, six ounces whole melon. Still relatively small for this batch size. I think overall for the two-barrel batch, we've got one pound, six six two two. Yeah, one pound. All right. After only a minor amount of danger and mayhem, uh, we've got everything hooked up. So what's happening right now is we've got. Our Brazilla right there that we're using the built-in pump to pump through our counterflow accelerator, which we just pushed a video out on the accelerator and why we use it all the time. Um, and into our tank through this, which is an oxygenation stone. Um, but since that's our small kettle, we've also got our big kettle right here that is pumping its excess. Actually, that's the main kettle, but it's pumping into the Brusilla. So we got that pumping into the Brusilla um, just to make sure that we can chill in one pass. I've got a counterflow in there um, in case we want to chill really, really fast because we're going to be using the first chunk of this to heat sanitize the everything in line. So we haven't even turned on chillers yet, but that means we've got more heat discrepancy to overcome. So we're going to run two chillers at the same time, make sure we get nice cold work into the fermenter. It's Belgian yeast, so it can go a little bit warm, but we want to ferment it nice and cool because we want this to be really, really neutral. Uh, I don't know, Warren. What do you got to add? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some <clears throat> sip film to the top uh, part of our fermenter here because we're having uh, leaking issues. Leaking issues. Are you on it? We're having leaking issues, so I'm gonna lube it up and make sure it's all sealed. Please tell me we're gonna get some really good B-roll of him lubing that up. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do the actual brewing part and less videoing. At least I am. Meow. That's sanity spray. Why would you spray that at the camera and my face? <laughs> and now I'm sitting here wiping the lens. That would be funnier if this wasn't a $5,000 camera. Well. All right, this is down to temp now. We're gonna add our yeast. Uh, and when we add our yeast, we're also gonna oxygenate over two days. So we're gonna oxygenate today, which is going on right now. And we're gonna oxygenate again tomorrow to make sure we've got a bunch of healthy growth in our yeast before it really does its action. We're also fermenting for Belgian yeast, this entire thing at a pretty low temperature, relatively speaking. Stay. You can see that this is ripping right now. The yeast is currently active going into there. That's where all the bubbles are coming from. Um, we're gonna add that active yeast right into our fermenter. Just like Beyblades, bay bay we're gonna let her rip. Start with a looser open ferment. 
you know, six to eight PSI. And then as it's, uh, as we're sure it's going, then we'll start to crank this up. It'll finish out in the last five, 10 points at uh, about 18 PSI to make sure we can get proper carbonation levels without having to add our own CO2. And then she'll be ready to go. Perfect. Three weeks later. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do the, uh, let's do the tasting real quick. And if you got more questions to add on, then let's go ahead and do those. You oh stop it, phone. God. One more time, one more ring, I swear. I'll come over there. Did it again. Let me take this really quick. You, this is this is business stuff right here. Hold on. Genus Brewing. Your life on the air. Boop 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 boop. boop. Our hours today are eleven thirty to six. Why is the sky blue? Well, you see, <laughs> the sky actually is clear, but there's water in the sky we that has to refract yeast. light as the sun's going through. Different yes, refractorizings. Sir. We've got it. See you soon. Alrighty, we'll be here. Bye. So, it has been about nice. two, two and a half weeks since we brewed this beer. As people who are watching this video on the video part of it will know, because they'll have just watched all the brewing parts of it. And it is uh, done, it's ready to keg, uh, moderately carbonated. And let's go ahead and jump in and give it a taste and let you know what it, it tastes is. It uh, is like. sitting at 5.2%, and the gravity right now is 1010. I'm just going to say off the nose, it is kind of fruit. It is definitely on the fruitier side, on it the is. nose. But it's got a fun, like it's not super like deep Belgian uh, fruit. smell flavor. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a very light fruit. It's almost. Which we, we you intended to kind of suppress some of that a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, because we fermented it cold. The idea was, yeah, to try to drop out some of the potential esters that the yeast. Look at made. this graph. Look at it. Oh, wow. We get to see all the stuff. People who are watching this in the actual video will be able to see that uh, this too, because we can take the graph and do it. <laughs> so cool! It's science, guys. Um, on the on Those the brewers flavor, are getting smart. That's right. On, on the flavor, it's a little bit like uh, like pink peppercorny, a little bit of bubblegummy. Definitely um, bubblegummy, yeah. And, and that's uh, probably why I was getting on the nose was that kind of bubblegummy fruitiness. Yeah, that kind of brightness. It's really good. Um, it's, it, it comes across bright. I think it's relatively suppressed, and it's gonna when it's fully conditioned and everything like that. I think it's gonna pop. Yes. And be a very. It's gonna be a, a, a good seller. Yeah. Aside from the coffee Kolsch, I think it'll be the lightest thing that we have on. That's not a seltzer. We should probably make a neutral light beer at some point in time, but I think this will get got the enough job two row for it. <laughs> it has like a little bit of witty vibes. Yeah. Like wit beery vibes. Mm -hmm. Just because the the phenols are dominating more than the esters. Um. Yeah. It's bright, poppy. It's good. And if you like this video, check out this other ones. Never mind, I'll do that at the end, and we'll figure out a different way to add that. Check out these videos that are floating in front of my hands. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want the link to this recipe, it's in the description below. Those of you that are on the live stream, I mean the description below the video that this is going to get published on. Um, like, subscribe, comment, ring some bells. Uh, buy everything that we own. Drink beer here at the place that we're at invite follow us on instagram copy link check the discord for all the state beers so is this, is this gonna be one of those midwest goodbyes where we say goodbye like five times but don't actually yeah, that's leave. usually how <laughs> yeah our uh, are. pretty soon we're gonna be start offering to like fix somebody's house yeah <laughs> well i guess i'll watch your kids next weekend hey? <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, we shouldn't try to see if we can like get it jimmy suggests cold activated nail polish that'd be cool nice. yeah well, no, 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 but you draw it on the can. <laughs> so clear, and then you draw it on the can. All right, and rough.